Welcome to American Accent Training. Exercise G. Three-word phrase story. The Three Little Pigs. Notice where there are patterns, where the words change, but the rhythm stays the same. Straw cutting tools, wood cutting tools, bricklaying tools. Read the story aloud. Once upon a time, there are three little pigs. They lived with their kind old mother near a large dark forest. One day they decided to build their own houses. The first little pig used straw. He took his straw cutting tools, his new lawnmower, and built a little straw house. The second little pig used sticks. He took his wood cutting tools and some old paint brushes and built a small wooden house. The third little pig, who was a very hard worker, used bricks. He took his bricklaying tools, an expensive mortar board, and built a large brick house. In the forest lived a big bad wolf. He wanted to eat the three little pigs, so he went to the flimsy straw abode and tried to blow it down. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, cried the three little porkers. But the house was not very strong, and the big bad beast blew it down. The three little pigs ran to the rickety wooden structure, but the big bad wolf blew it down too. Quickly, the three little piggies ran to the sturdy brick dwelling and hid inside. The big bad wolf huffed and he puffed, but he couldn't blow the strong brick house down. The three little pigs laughed and danced and sang. Exercise H, Sentence Balance, Goldilocks. One of the most fascinating things about spoken English is how the intonation prepares the listener for what's coming. As you know, the main job of intonation is to announce new information. However, there's a secondary function, and that's to alert the listener of changes down the road. Certain shifts will be dictated for the sake of sentence balance. Set phrases and contrast don't change, but the intonation of a descriptive phrase will move from the second word to the first without changing the meaning. The stress change indicates that it's not the end of the sentence, but rather, there's more to come. This is why it's particularly important to speak in phrases instead of word by word. When we practiced Goldilocks and the Three Bears the first time on page 34, we had very short sentences, so we didn't need sentence balance. All of the underlying descriptive phrases would otherwise be stressed on the second word if the shift weren't needed. There's a little girl called Goldilocks. She's walking through a sunny forest and sees a small house. She knocks on the door, but no one answers. She goes inside to see what's there. There are three chairs in the large room. Goldilocks sits on the biggest chair. It's too high for her to sit on. She sits on the middle-sized one, but it's too low. She sits on the small chair, and it's just right. On the table, there are three bowls of porridge. She tries the first one, but it's too hot to swallow. The second one is too cold, and the third one is just right. So she eats it all. After that, she goes upstairs to look around. There are three beds in the bedroom. She sits down on the biggest one. It's too hard to sleep on. The middle-sized bed is too soft. The little one is just right. So she lies down and falls asleep. In the meantime, the family of three bears comes home. The papa bear, the mama bear, and the baby bear. They look around and say, 
Who's been sitting in our chairs and eating our porridge? Then they run upstairs and say, Who's been sleeping in our beds? Goldilocks wakes up when she hears all the noise and is so scared that she runs out of the house and never comes back. Four word phrases. Exercise I. Multiple modifiers with set phrases. When you continue to modify a set phrase, you maintain the original intonation pattern and simply add an additional stress point. 1. It's a short fingernail. It's a really short fingernail. 2. It's a banana pancake. It's a tasty banana pancake. 3. It's a leaky hot tub. It's a leaky old hot tub. 4. It's a new hard drive. It's a brand new hard drive. 5. It's a long backbone. It's a long hard backbone. 6. It's a wrinkled playing card. It's a wrinkled old playing card. 7. It's a bright spotlight. It's a bright white spotlight. 8. It's the new phone book. It's a new age phone book. Exercise J. Compound intonation of numbers. In short phrases, teen can be thought of as a separate word in terms of intonation. In longer phrases, the number plus teen becomes one word. Repeat after me. 1. How old is he? He's 14. He's 40. 2. How long has it been? 14 years. 40 years. 3. How old is he? He's 14 years old. He's 40 years old. Exercise K. Modifying three-word set phrases. When you continue to modify a set phrase, you maintain the original intonation pattern and simply add an unstressed modifier. 1. It's a fingernail clipper. It's a new fingernail clipper. 2. It's a pancake shop. It's a good pancake shop. 3. He's a hot tub maker. He's the best hot tub maker. 4. It's a hard drive holder. It's a plastic hard drive holder. 5. It's a backbone massage. It's a painful backbone massage. 6. It's a playing card rack. It's my best playing card rack. 7. It's a spotlight bulb. It's a fragile spotlight bulb. 8. It's a phone book listing. It's an unusual phone book listing. Exercise L. Four-word phrase story. Little Red Riding Hood. Repeat after me. Once upon a time, there was a cute little redhead named Little Red Riding Hood. One day she told her mother, that she wanted to take a well-stocked picnic basket to her dear old grandmother on the other side of the dark, scary black forest. Her mother warned her not to talk to strangers, especially the dangerous big bad wolf. Little Red Riding Hood said she'd be careful and left. Halfway there, she saw a mild-mannered hitchhiker she pulled over in her bright red sports car and offered him a ride. Just before they got to the freeway turnoff for her old grandmother's house, the heavily bearded young man jumped out and ran away. Was he the wolf? He hurried ahead to the waiting grandmother's house, let himself in, ate her, and jumped into her bed to wait for Little Red Riding Hood. When Little Red Riding Hood got to the house, she was surprised. Grandmother, what big eyes you have. The wolf replied, the better to see you with, my dear. But grandmother, what big ears you have. The better to hear you with, my dear. Oh, grandmother, what big teeth you have. 
the better to eat you with. And the wolf jumped out of the bed to eat Little Red Riding Hood. Fortunately for her, she was a recently paid up member of the infamous National Rifle Association. So she pulled out a brand new shotgun and shot the wolf dead. Exercise M, building up to five word phrases. Repeat after me, then pause the CD and write your own phrases using the same order and form. One, it's a pot. Two, it's new. Three, it's a new pot. Four, brand new. Five, it's a brand new pot. Six, it's a teapot. Seven, it's a new teapot. Eight, it's a brand new teapot. Nine, it's a teapot lid. Ten, it's a new teapot lid. Eleven, it's a brand new teapot lid. Review Exercise 9, Ignorance on Parade. Now, let's dissect a standard paragraph, including its title, as we did in Review Exercise 1. First, in the boxes in the first paragraph, decide which is a descriptive phrase, which is a set phrase, and where any additional stress might fall. Use one of your colored markers to indicate the stressed words. Second, go through the paragraph and mark the remaining stressed words. Third, Put slash marks where you think a short pause is appropriate. Listen as I read the paragraph. Review Exercise 10. Ignorance on Parade Explanations. Here, go over each topic point by point. Chapter 7. TH. I'd like you to consider words as rocks for a moment. When a rock first rolls into the ocean, it is sharp and well-defined. After tumbling about for a few millennia, it becomes round and smooth. A word goes through a similar process. When it first rolls into English, it may have a lot of sharp, well-defined vowels or consonants in it, but after rolling off of a few million tongues, it becomes round and smooth. This smoothing process occurs when a tense vowel becomes reduced and when an unvoiced consonant becomes voiced. The most common words are the smoothest, the most reduced, the most often voiced. There are several very common words that are all voiced. This, that, the, those, them, they, there, there, then, then, though. The strong words such as think, think, or thing, as well as long or unusual words such as thermometer or theologian, stay unvoiced. The sound of the TH combination seems to exist only in English, Greek, and Castilian Spanish. Just as with most of the other consonants, there are two types, voiced and unvoiced. The voiced TH is like a D, but instead of being in back of the teeth, it's a quarter inch lower and forward between the teeth. The unvoiced TH is like an S between the teeth. Most people tend to replace the unvoiced TH with S or T, and the voiced one with Z or D, so instead of thing, they say sing or ting, and instead of that, they say zat or dat. To pronounce TH correctly, think of a snake's tongue. You don't want to take a big, relaxed tongue, throw it out of your mouth for a long distance, and leave it there for a long time. Make only a very quick, sharp little movement. Keep your tongue's tip very tense. It darts out between your teeth and snaps back very quickly. Thing. That this. The tongue's position for the unvoiced TH is similar to that of S, but for TH the tongue is extended through the teeth instead of hissing behind the back of the teeth. The voiced TH is like a D, except that the tongue is placed between the teeth or even pressed behind the teeth. Now we're ready for some practice. Exercise 7-1, the throng of thermometers. I'm going to read the following paragraph once straight through so that you can hear that no matter how fast I read it, all the THs are still there. It's a distinctive sound, but when you repeat it, don't put too much effort into it. Listen to my reading. 
The throng of thermometers from the Thuringian thermometer folks arrived on Thursday. There were 1,033 thick thermometers, though, instead of 1,036 thin thermometers, which was three thermometers fewer than the 1,036 we were expecting, not to mention that they were thick ones rather than thin ones. We thoroughly thought that we had ordered 1,036, not 1,033 thermometers, and asked the Thuringian thermometer folks to reship the thermometers thin, not thick. They apologized for sending only 1,033 thermometers rather than 1,036, and promised to replace the thick thermometers with thin thermometers. Exercise 7-2, Targeting the TH Sound. In order to target the TH sound, first hold a mirror in front of you and read our familiar paragraph silently, moving only your tongue. It should be visible in the mirror each time you come to a TH. Second, find all the THs, both voiced and unvoiced. Remember, a voice sound makes your throat vibrate, and you can feel that vibration by placing your fingers on your throat. There are ten voiced and two unvoiced THs here. You can mark them by underscoring the former and drawing a circle around the latter. Or, if you prefer, use two of your color markers. Pause the CD to mark the TH sounds. Don't forget to check your answers against the answer key beginning on page 193. Exercise 7-3, Tongue Twisters. Feeling confident? Good. Try the following tongue twisters and have some fun. 1. The sixth, sick sheiks, sixth, thick sheep. 2. This is a zither. Is this a zither? 3. I thought a thought, but the thought I thought wasn't the thought I thought I thought. If the thought I thought I thought had been the thought I thought, I wouldn't have thought so much. Chapter 8. More Reduced Sounds There are two sounds that look similar, but sound quite different. One is the tense vowel, pronounced oo, and the other is the soft vowel, u, uh, whose pronunciation is a combination of i and a. Uh. The oo sound is located far forward in the mouth and requires you to round your lips. The u uh is one of the four reduced vowel sounds that are made in the throat. The most tense and highest in the throat is e. Eh. Next, slightly more relaxed is i, eh, then e, uh, and the deepest and most relaxed is the neutral schwa, e. Uh. For the reduced semivowel schwa plus r, the throat is relaxed, but the tongue is tense. Exercise 8-1. Comparing u and e. Uh. Look at the chart that follows and repeat each word. We're contrasting the sound u, a strong, non-reducible sound, Ooh, that is made far forward in the mouth, with the lips fully rounded, with the reduced uh sound in the second and fourth columns. 1. Booed. Book. 2. Boo. Bushel. 3. Cooed. Could. 4. Cool. Cushion. 5. Food. Foot. 6. Fool. Full. Seven. Good. Good. Eight. Hood. Hood. Nine. Cook. Cook. Ten. Crew. Crook. Eleven. Luke. Look. Twelve. Nuke. Nook. Thirteen. Pool. Pull. Fourteen. Pooch, put. Fifteen, shoe, sugar. Sixteen, suit, sit. Seventeen, shoot, should. Eighteen, stewed, stood. Nineteen, toucan, took. Twenty, wooed, would. Exercise 8-2, lax vowels. The lax vowels are produced in the throat and are actually quite similar to each other. Let's practice some lax vowels. See also chapter 11 to contrast with tense vowels. Remember to double the vowel when the word ends in a voice consonant. One, end, it, un, earn, two, bet, bit, book, but, burn, three, kept, kid, could, cut, Kurt, four, check, chick, chuck, church, five, debt, did, does, dirt, 
six, fence, fit, foot, fun, first, seven, fell, fill, full, furl, eight, get, guilt, good, gut, girl, nine, help, hit, hook, hut, hurt, ten, held, hill, hood, hull, hurl, eleven, gel, jill, jump, jerk, twelve, kid, kid, cook, cud, curd, thirteen, crest, crypt, crook, crumb, fourteen, let, little, look, lump, lurk, fifteen, men, milk, muck, murmur, sixteen, net, knit, nook, nut, nerd, seventeen, pet, pit, put, put, pert, eighteen, pell, pill, pull, pearl, nineteen, red, rid, root, rut, rural, twenty, said, sit, soot, such, search, twenty-one, shed, shin, should, shut, sure, twenty-two, sled, slim, slug, slur, twenty-three, stead, still, stood, stuff, stir, twenty-four, it stewed, it stick, it stood, it's done, it's dirt, twenty-five, stretch, string, struck, twenty-six, tell, tip, took, ton, turn, twenty-seven, then, this, thus, twenty-eight, thing, thug, third, twenty-nine, vex, vim, vug, verb, Exercise 8.3, bit or beat. We've discussed intonation in terms of new information, contrast, opinion, and negatives. As you heard on page 3, Americans tend to stretch out certain one-syllable words. But which ones? The answer is simple. When a single-syllable word ends in an unvoiced consonant, the vowel is on a single stair step, short and sharp. When the word ends in a voiced consonant or a vowel, the vowel is on a double stair step. You can also think of this in terms of musical notes. Here you're going to compare the four words bit, bid, beat, and bead. Once you can distinguish these four, all the rest are easy. Repeat. Bit, bid, beat, bead. Exercise 8-4. Bit or beat? Bid or bead? Read each column down. Next, contrast the single and double tense vowels with each other and the single and double lax vowels with each other. Finally, read all four across. Tense vowels beat, seat, heat, peat, feet, niece, geese, deep, neat, leaf, bead, seed, heed, impede, feed, Knees, he's, deed, need, leave. Lax vowels, bit, sit, hit, pit, fit, miss, hiss, disc, knit, lift, bid, sid, hid, rapid, fin, miz, his, did, nid, live. Tense vowels. Beat, bead. Seat, seed. Heat, heed. Pete, impede. Feet, feed. Niece, knees. Geese, he's. Deep, deed. Neat, need. Leaf, leave. Lax vowels. Bit, bid. Sit, sid. Hit, hid. Pit, 
rapid, fit, fin, miss, miz, hiss, his, disc, did, knit, nid, lift, live. 1. Beat, bead, bit, bid. 2. Seat, seed, sit, Fin. Knees, knees, miss, miz. Seven. Geese, he's, hiss, his. Eight. Deep, deed, disc, did. Nine. Neat, need, knit, nid. Ten. Leaf, leave. Lift, live. Exercise 8-5, tense and lax vowel exercise. Let's practice tense and lax vowels in context. The intonation is marked for you. When in doubt, try to leave out the lax vowel rather than run the risk of overpronouncing it. Lip instead of lip, so it doesn't sound like leap. Repeat. One, eat it. I eat it. Two, beat bit. The beat is a bit strong. 3. Keys, kiss. Give me a kiss for the keys. 4. Cheek, chick. The chick's cheek is soft. 5. Deed, did. He did the deed. 6. Feet, fit. These shoes fit my feet. 7. Feel, Fill. Do you feel that we should fill it? 8. Green. Grin. The Martian's grin was green. 9. Heat. Hit. Last summer the heat hit hard. 10. Heel. Hill. Put your heel on the hill. 11. Jeep. Jill. Jill's Jeep is here. 12. Creep, crypt. Let's creep near the crypt. 13. Leap, lip. He bumped his lip when he leaped. 14. Meal, mill. She had a meal at the mill. 15. Neat, knit. He can knit neatly. 16. Peel, pill. Don't peel that pill. 17. Read, rid. Get rid of the reed. 18. Seek, sick. We seek the sixth sick sheik's sheep. 19. Sheep, ship. There are sheep on the ship. 20. Sleep, slip. The girl sleeps in a slip. 21. Steal, Still. He still steals. 22. Streep. Strip. Meryl Streep is in a comic strip. 23. Team. Tim. Tim is on the team. 24. These. This. These are better than this one. 25. Thief. Thing. The thief took my thing. 26. Weep. Whip. Who weeps from the whips? Exercise 8-6, the middle I list. The letter I in the unstressed position devolves consistently into a schwa. Repeat. Ability, accident, accountability, activity, adversity, America, analytical, animal, applicant, application, article, astronomical, audible, auditor, Authority, availability, beautiful, brutality, calamity, California, candidate, capacity, celebrity, charity, Christianity, 
clinical, clerical, chemical. Exercise 8-7, Reduction Options. In the following example, you'll see how you can fully sound out a word, such as to, reduce it slightly, or do away with it altogether. 1. Easier to understand. 2. Easier to understand. 3. Easier to understand. 4. Easier to understand. 5. Easier to understand. Exercise 8-8. Eight, eight. Finding reduced sounds. Go through the paragraph that follows and find the three uhs and the five to seven oohs. Remember that your own speech style can increase the possibilities. With two before a vowel, you have a choice of a strong oo, a soft uh, a schwa, or to telescope the two words and eliminate the vowel entirely. Pause the CD to mark the uh and oo sounds. The first one is marked for you. Remember to check the answer key beginning on page 193. Exercise 8-9. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck? How fast can you say, how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? How many cookies could a good cook cook if a good cook could cook cookies? How many cookies could a good cook cook if a good cook could cook cookies? How many cookies could a good cook cook if a good cook could cook cookies? In the following two exercises, we'll practice the two vowel sounds separately. Exercise 810, Booker Woolsey's Cookbook. Repeat after me. Booker Woolsey was a good cook. One day he took a good look at his full schedule and decided that he could write a good cookbook. He knew that he could and thought that he should, but he wasn't sure that he ever would. Once he had made up his mind, he stood up, pulled up a table, took a cushion, and put it on a bushel basket of sugar in the kitchen nook. He shook out his writing hand and put his mind to creating a good, good cookbook. Exercise 811, A True Fool. Repeat after me. A true fool will choose to drool in a pool to stay cool. Who knew that such fools were in the schools, used tools and flew balloons? Lou knew, and now you do, too. Intonation and Attitude There are certain sounds in any language that are considered nonsense syllables, yet impart a large amount of information to the informed listener. Each language has a different set of these sounds, such as étonné in Japanese, m in Spanish, e in French, and um, in English. In this particular case, these are the sounds that a native speaker makes when he's thinking out loud, holding the floor, but not yet committing to actually speaking. Exercise 812, Nonverbal Intonation. The top eight are the most common non-word communication sounds. They can all be nasalized or not and said with the mouth open or closed. Intonation is the most important factor here. Repeat after me. One, uh-oh, two, uh-huh, three, uh-uh, four, uh, -uh. five, hmm, six, hmm. Seven, ah, eight, aha, uh A, aha, uh B, aha, uh C, aha, uh D, uh uh, E, uh uh, F, uh uh. Chapter nine V is in victory. When pronounced correctly, V shouldn't stand out too much. Its sound, although noticeable, is small. As a result, people, depending on their native language, sometimes confuse 
V with B, Spanish and Japanese, with F, German, or with W, Chinese and Hindi. These four sounds are not at all interchangeable. The W is a semi-vowel and there is no friction or contact. The B, like P, uses both lips and has a slight pop. Americans tend to have a strong popping P. You can check your pronunciation by holding a match, a sheet of paper, or just your hand in front of your mouth. If the flame goes out, the paper wavers, or you feel a distinct puff of air on your hand, you've said P, not B. B is the voice pair of P. Although F and V are in exactly the same position, F is a hiss and V is a buzz. The V is the voiced pair of F, as you saw in Chapter 2. When you say F, it's as if you're whispering. So for V, say F and then simply add some voice to it, which is the whole difference between fairy and very, as you'll hear in our next exercise. The F2 presents problems to Japanese who say an H sound. To pronounce F, the lower lip raises up and the inside of the lip very lightly touches the outside of the upper teeth and you make a slight hissing sound. Don't bite the outside of your lip at all. Exercise 9-1. Mind your V's. Repeat the following words and sounds after me. First down and then across. Perry, Pat, Paul, Pig, Prayed, Poi, Pull, Purr, Berry, Bat, Ball, Big, Braid, Boy, Bull, Burr, Fairy, Fat, Fall, Fig, Frayed, Foil, Full, Fur, Very, Vat, Vault, Vim, Avoid, Verb, Wary, Wax, Wall, Wig, Wade, Wool, Were, Across, Perry, Berry, Fairy, Very, Wary, Pat, Bat, Fat, Vat, Wax, Paul, Ball, Fall, Vault, Wall, Pig, Big, Fig, Vim, Wig, Prayed, Braid, Frayed, Weighed, Poi, Boy, Foil, Avoid, Pull, Bull, Full, Wool, Purr, Burr, Fur, Verb, Were. Exercise 9-2. The Vile VIP. Repeat after me, focusing on V and W. When revising his visitor's version of a plan for a very well-paved avenue, the VIP was advised to reveal none of his motives. Eventually, however, the hapless visitor discovered his knavish views and confided that it was vital to review the plans together to avoid a conflict. The VIP was not convinced and averred that he would have it vetoed by the vice president. This quite vexed the visitor, who then vowed to invent an indestructible paving compound in order to avenge his good name. The VIP found himself on the verge of a civil war with a visitor with whom he had previously conversed easily. It was only due to his insufferable vanity that the inevitable division arrived as soon as it did. Never again did the visitor converse with the vain VIP and they remained divided forever. Exercise 9-3 Finding V Sounds Underline the five V sounds in this paragraph. The first one is marked for you. Don't forget of. Chapter 10, S or Z. The sound of the letter S is S only if it follows an unvoiced consonant. Otherwise, it becomes a Z in disguise. When an S follows a vowel, a voice consonant, or another S, it turns into a Z. The following exercise will let you hear and practice S 
with its dual sound. There are many more Z sounds in English than S sounds. Exercise 10.1 When S becomes Z Under contrast in the list that follows, notice how the voiced word is drawn out and then repeat the word after me. Both voiced and unvoiced diphthongs have the underlying structure of the tone shift or the double stair step, but the shift is much larger for the voiced ones. 1. Price, prize. 2. Peace, peas. 3. Place, plays. 4. Ice, eyes. 5. His, his. 6. Close, to close. 7. Use, to use. 8. Rice, rise. 9. Pace, pays. 10. Lacy, lazy. 11. Thirsty, Thursday. 12. Bus, buzz. 13. Dust, does. 14. Face, phase. 15. Sue, zoo. 16. Loose, lose. Exercise 10.2. A surly sergeant socked an insolent sailor. Repeat the S sounds in the paragraph below. Sam, a surly sergeant from Cisco, Texas, saw a sailor sit silently on a small seat reserved for youngsters. He stayed for several minutes while tots swarmed around. Sam asked the sailor to cease and desist, but he sneered in his face. Sam was so incensed that he considered it sufficient incentive to sock the sailor. The sailor stood there for a second, astonished, and then strolled away. Sam was perplexed but satisfied, and the tot scampered like ants over to the seesaw. Exercise 10.3. All's well that ends well. Repeat the Z sounds in the paragraph below. A lazy Thursday at the zoo found the zebras grazing on zinnias, posing for pictures, and teasing the zookeeper, whose nose was bronzed by the sun. The biggest zebra's name was Zachary, but his friends called him Zach. Zach was a confusing zebra whose zeal for reason caused his cousins, who were naturally unreasoning, to pause in their conversations. While they browsed, he philosophized. As they grazed, he practiced Zen. Because they were Zach's cousins, the zebras said nothing, but they wished he would muzzle himself at times. Exercise 10.4. Voiced and unvoiced endings in the past tense. The following will explain the differences between four expressions that are similar in appearance, but different in both meaning and pronunciation. Exercise 10.5. Finding S and Z sounds. Go through the paragraph and underline all of the S sounds. The first, accent, is marked for you. Next, circle all the Z sounds no matter how the word is written. Exercise 10.6. Application steps with S and Z. Build up the following sentence, adding each aspect one at a time. Always be a little kinder than necessary. Exercise 10.7. Your own application steps with S and Z. Write your own sentence, then build it up, adding each aspect one at a time. Chapter 11. Tense and Lax Vowels. In this chapter, we tackle tense and lax vowels. This is the difference between A, tense, and E, lax, E, tense, and E, lax. We'll start with tense vowels. Exercise 11.1. One, tense vowels. Don't pay attention to spelling or meaning. Just remember, if you're in the ah column, they all have the same ah sound. Repeat. One. Ah. Out. Ought. Eyed. Ate. Eat. Ooze. Own. Two. Bat. About. Bought. Bite. Bait. Beat. Boot, boat, three, cat, couch, cot, kite, cane, 
keys, cool, coat, four, chat, chowder, chalk, child, chair, cheer, choose, chose, five, dad, doubt, dot, dial, date, deed, do, don't. Exercise 11.1. Tense vowels. Don't pay attention to spelling or meaning. Just remember, if you're in the ah column, they all have the same ah sound. Repeat. One. Ah. Out. Ought. Eyed. Ate. Eat. Ooze. Own. Two. Bat. About. Bought. Bite. Bait. Beat. Boot, boat, three, cat, couch, cot, kite, cane, keys, cool, coat, four, chat, chowder, chalk, child, chair, cheer, choose, chose, five, dad, doubt, dot, dial, date, deed, do, don't. Six, fat, found, fought, fight, fate, feet, food, phone. Seven, fallow, fountain, fall, file, fail, feel, fool, full. Eight, gas, gown, got, kite, gate, gear, Ghoul, go. Nine, hat, how, hot, height, hate, heat, hoot, hope. Ten, hal, howl, hall, hile, hail, heel, hool, hole. Eleven, jack, jowl, jock, giant, jail. Jeep, Jewel, Joel. Twelve, Crab, Crowd, Crawl, Crime, Crate, Creep, Cruel, Crow. Thirteen, Last, Loud, Lost, Line, Late, Lee, Lou, Low. Fourteen, Mat, Mountain, Mop, Might, Mate. Mean, moon, moan. Fifteen, nat, now, not, night, nate, neat, noon, note. Sixteen, pal, pound, paul, pile, pale, peel, pool, pole. Seventeen, rat, round, rot, right, rate. Real, rule, roll. Eighteen, sat, sound, soft, sight, sail, seal, sue, soul. Nineteen, shall, shower, shawl, shine, shade, she, shoe, show. Twenty, slap, slouch, slop, slide. Slayed, sleep, slew, slow. Twenty one, stag, stout, stop, style, stale, steal, stool, stole. Twenty two, strap, stroud, straw, stride, straight, stream, strew, stroll. Twenty three, tap, town. Top, type, tape, team, tool, told. Twenty four, that, thou, thar, thine, they, these, though. Twenty five, thang, thousand, thought, thy, thane, thief, throw. Twenty six, van, vow, volume, viper. Vain, veal, voodoo, vote. 
Twenty-seven. Wax. Wow. Wash. Wipe. Wane. Wheel. Woo. Woe. Twenty-eight. Yank. Yow. Yawn. Yikes. Yale. Year. You. Yo. Twenty-nine. Zap. Zowie. Zombie. Xylophone. Zany. Zebra. Zoo. Zo. Exercise eleven two. Tense vowels practice paragraph. Go through the subsequent paragraph and mark all the tense vowels, starting with a. There are twelve here. The first one is name, not nem. The first e sound of fourteen is the American. The same five a sounds can be found as in exercise three two on page seventy four, plus the ow of sound. Pause the CD to do the marking. Check your answer in the answer key beginning on page one ninety three. Exercise eleven three lax vowels. As we saw in chapter eight, these are the lax vowels. Exercise eleven four lax vowels practice paragraph. Again, go over this paragraph and mark the lax vowels, starting with e. The first one of about twelve possible is in hello or American. The first i sound of nine to twenty-two may be found in is. The numbers are approximations because you may have already reduced the e of hello and the i of is into schwas. Pause the CD to do the marking. Check your answer in the answer key beginning on page one ninety three. Exercise eleven five. Take a high tech tack. Repeat the following paragraph in words after me. Say, Ray, take a tack. A high tack tack. No, Ray, a high tech tack. Eight high tech tacks. Take 'em. Then find a way to make a place for the tacks on the day bed. Hey, you lay the tacks on the paper place mat on the table. Not on the day bed, Ray. At your age, why do you always make the same mistakes? Late. Lack, let, take, tack, tech, mate, mat, met, hail, hal, hell, fate, fat, fetch, cane, can, ken. Exercise eleven six. Pick a peak. Repeat the following paragraph in words after me. Bold-faced elements represent the e sound. The i is only marked with underscoring. People who pick peaks weakly seem to need to appear deep in order to be distinguished from mere pea pickers. Peter, a champion peak picker, thought he'd be even neater if he were the deepest peak picker in Peoria, Phoenix, and New Zealand. On his peak peak picking week, though. Peter, a peak picker's peak picker, realized that he was not deep. This is not easy for a peak picker to admit, and it pitched Peter into a pit of peak picking despair. He was pitiful for three weeks, and then lifted himself to hitherto unrevealed personal peaks. Eat, it, sheep, ship, seat, sit. Neat, knit, feet, fit, sleep, slip. Grammar in a bigger nutshell. In chapter one, we studied compound nouns and complex verb tenses. Now we're going to put them together and practice the intonation of some complicated sentences. Exercise eleven seven: Compound nouns and complex verbs. No matter how complex the verb gets, remember to follow the basic "dogs eat bones" intonation, where you stress the nouns. For the noun intonation, stick with the basic set phrase or description rule. Let's build up one complex noun for the subject and another one for the object, starting with "the millionaires were impressed by the equipment." 
the millionaires, the elderly millionaires, the elderly Texas millionaires, the two elderly Texas millionaires, the equipment, eavesdropping equipment, electronic eavesdropping equipment, sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment. One. The two elderly Texas millionaires are impressed by the sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment. Two. The two elderly Texas millionaires were impressed by the sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment. Three. At the moment, the two elderly Texas millionaires are being impressed by the sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment. Four. The two elderly Texas millionaires will be impressed by the sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment. Five. The two elderly Texas millionaires would be impressed by the sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment if there were more practical applications for it. Six. The two elderly Texas millionaires that have been impressed by the sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment if there had been more practical applications for it. Seven. The two elderly Texas millionaires that have been so impressed by the sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment are now researching a new program. Eight. The two elderly Texas millionaires have been impressed by the sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment for a long time now. Nine. The two elderly Texas millionaires had been impressed by the sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment long before the burglary was thwarted. Ten. The two elderly Texas millionaires will have been thoroughly impressed by the sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment by the time I've done my presentation. Eleven. The two elderly Texas millionaires ought to be impressed by the sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment. Twelve. The two elderly Texas millionaires should be impressed by the sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment. Thirteen. The two elderly Texas millionaires shouldn't be too impressed by the sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment. Fourteen. The two elderly Texas millionaires should have been impressed by the sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment. Fifteen. Given the circumstances, the two elderly Texas millionaires shouldn't have been that impressed by the sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment. Sixteen. We think that the two elderly Texas millionaires could easily be impressed by the sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment. Seventeen. No matter what we did, the two elderly Texas millionaires couldn't be impressed by even the most sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment. Eighteen. The two elderly Texas millionaires could have been impressed by the sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment, but we're not sure. Nineteen. The two elderly Texas millionaires couldn't have been impressed by the sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment because they left after five minutes. Twenty. The two elderly Texas millionaires might be impressed by the sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment this time around. Twenty-one. The two elderly Texas millionaires might have been impressed by the sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment, but they gave no indication one way or the other. Twenty-two. The two elderly Texas millionaires must be impressed by the sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment because they're considering a huge order. Twenty-three. The two elderly Texas millionaires must have been impressed by the sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment because they ordered so much of it. Twenty-four. The two elderly Texas millionaires can be impressed by the sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment because they don't know much about surveillance. Twenty-five. The two elderly Texas millionaires can't be impressed by the sophisticated electronic eavesdropping equipment because they invented most of the state-of-the-art technology currently available. Exercise 11.8. Your own compound nouns. Pause the CD and build up your own compound nouns, both subject and object. Exercise 11.9. Your compound nouns and complex verbs. Using your compound nouns from exercise 11.8, choose a verb and put it through all the changes. 
Remember that it helps to have a verb that starts with a vowel. Add explanatory words to round out the sentence, complete the thought, and support the verb. Exercise 1110, Practical Application, U.S.-Japan Trade Friction. Listen to the following excerpt and compare the two versions. Forty years after the end of World War II, Japan and the U.S. are again engaged in conflict. Trade frictions, which began as minor irritants in an otherwise smooth relationship in the 1960s, have gradually escalated over the years. The conflict is more dangerous than it appears because its real nature is partially hidden. It masquerades as a banal and sometimes grubby dispute over widgets, with the stakes being whether American or Japanese big business makes more money. In truth, the issue is strategic and geopolitical in nature. Japan is once again challenging the U.S., only this time the issue is not China or the Pacific, but world industrial and technological leadership and the military and economic powers which have always been its corollaries. Exercise 1112, Presidential Candidates Debate. The President tomorrow night is expected in his State of the Union message to propose federal subsidies to help low-income families overcome the so-called digital divide. Is it an appropriate use of government funds to hand out computers and provide Internet access to those who can't afford it? And if not, why not? We'll begin with Mr. Keyes. I think this is another case where politicians try to jump on the bandwagon of something that's going on in the economy. So everybody's going to think that they actually had something to do with the result when they don't. Uh, there is no need for this. We are already seeing out there proposals for the distribution of free PCs, not based on some politician making a judgment and spending taxpayer money, but based on the self-interest of those who are involved in a new world, a new world in which participation is the key to profit, and in which there is actually a strong incentive among those who participate in the private sector to give access to individuals so that they can improve their opportunities for profit, for information sharing. That's what has already been going on. It will continue. There is no need for the government to pretend that it needs to take leadership here. I think that's just political posturing. Senator McCain. I believe that we do have a problem, and that is that there's a growing gap between the haves and the have-nots in America, those that are able to take part in this information technology and those that haven't. We took a major step forward when we decided to wire every school and library in America to the Internet. That's a good program. We have to have step two, three, and four, which means good equipment, good teachers, and good classrooms. Now, I wouldn't do it directly, but there's lots of ways that you can encourage corporations who in their own self-interest would want to provide, would receive tax benefits, would receive credit, and many other ways for being involved in the schools and upgrading the quality of the equipment that they have, the quality of the students, and thereby providing a much-needed, well-trained workforce. Thank you. Mr. Forbes. Chapter 12, Nasal Consonants. We now turn to the three consonants whose sounds come out through the nose, M, N, and the NG combination. They each have one thing in common. Their sound is blocked in the mouth in one of three locations. Two of them, N and G, you can't even see, as with R, so they're hard to pick up on. M is the easiest and most obvious, like B. The lips come together, the air can't get out, so it has to come through the nose. N is in a position similar to T, but it can't be at all tense. It has to be completely relaxed, filling the whole mouth, touching the insides of all the teeth, leaving no room for the air to escape except by the nose. N is back in the throat with G. The back of the tongue presses back, and again, the air comes out through the nose. Exercise 12.1. Nasal consonants. We're going to contrast nasals with regular consonant sounds. Repeat after me. Me, be, llama, lobber, rom, rob, knees, deals, lana, lauder, ron, rod, long eels, geese, longer, lager, wrong, log. Exercise 12.2, ending nasal consonants. Here we'll focus on the final sounds. Repeat after me. Rum, 
run, rung, sum, sun, sung, bum, bun, bung, tum, ton, tung, dum, dun, dung, psalm, son, song. Exercise 12.3, reading nasal consonant sounds. We'll read the following paragraph. Repeat after me. The young King Kong can sing along on anything in the kingdom as long as he can bring a strong ringing to the changing songs. He can only train on June mornings when there's a full moon. But June lends itself to singing like nothing else. Ding Dong, on the other hand, is not a singer. He cannot sing for anything. He's a man often seen on the green lawn, on the Boston Open, where no one ever, ever sings. Exercise 12.4, finding N and NG sounds. Pause the CD and find and mark the final N and NG sounds. Chapter 13, Throaty Consonants. There are five consonant sounds that are produced in the throat. K, G, N, R. Because R can be considered a consonant, its sound is included here. For pronunciation purposes, however, elsewhere this book treats it as a semivowel. Exercise 13.1, Throaty Consonants. Here we'll read across the list of initial, middle, and final consonants. Ha, reheat, hood, in half, heel, unhinge, hat, unheard of, ka, accident, rink, could, accent, rack, keel, include, cork, cat, actor, block, ga, regale, rug, good, ingrate, hog, geese, agree, big, gat, organ, log, Long Island, Bronx, wrong, a long wait, inky, daring, dang you, larynx, averaging, being honest, English, clung, raw, error, rare, roof, arrow, air, real, mirror, injure, rat, carbon, prefer. Exercise 13.2, the letter X. The letter X can sound like either KS or GZ, depending on the letter that follows the X and where the stress falls. Excite, extra, exercise, experience, accept, execute, excellent, example, exist, exam, exert, examine, executive, exit, exactly. Exercise 13.3, reading the H, K, G, N, G, and R sounds. Repeat after me. H. Help, hissed the harried intern. We have to hurry. The half-wit who is hired to help her home hit her hard with the Honda. She didn't have a helmet on her head to protect her, so she has to have a checkup ahead of the others. K. The computer cursor careened across the screen, erasing key characters as it scrolled past. The technician was equally confused by the computer technology and the complicated keyboard, so he clicked off the computer, cleaned off his desk, accepted his paycheck, and caught a taxi cab for the airport. Destination Caracas. 
G. The Wizard of Og. There was a man named Og. Who was his best friend? Dog. Where did he live? Bog. What was his house made of? Log. Who was his neighbor? Frog. What did he drink? Eggnog. What did he do for fun? Jog. What's the weather in his swamp? Fog. NG. The stunning woman would not have a fling with the strong young flamingo trainer until she had a ring on her finger. He was angry because he longed for her. She inquired if he were hungry, but he hung his head in a funk. The flamingo trainer banged his fist on the fish tank and sang out, Dang it! I'm sunk without you, pumpkin. She took in a long, slow lung full of air and sighed. R. War is horrible. During any war, terrible things occur. The result is painful memories and disfiguring scars for the very people needed to rebuild a war-torn country. The leaders of every country must learn that wars are never won, lives are always lost, and history is doomed to repeat itself unless we all decide to live in harmony with our brothers and sisters. R. War is horrible. During any war, terrible things occur. The result is painful memories and disfiguring scars for the very people needed to rebuild a war-torn country. The leaders of every country must learn that wars are never won, lives are always lost, and history is doomed to repeat itself unless we all decide to live in harmony with our brothers and sisters. Exercise 13.4, Glottal Consonant Practice Paragraph. Pause the CD and go through the paragraph and mark the H, K, G, N, G, and R sounds.